Hi everyone, and welcome to my second episode covering some of the figures from Atomic Mass Games' Marvel Crisis Protocol. In this episode, I'm going to be heavily inspired by some 90s X-Men comics of mine and paint up old One-Eye himself, Cyclops. As you can see, he's already been assembled and had a Xenophil Prime applied to him. You probably picked up on the fact that I'm going to be doing a spot of customization to the figure by adding his optic blast as well as some dramatic object source lighting to accompany it. I want to just take a moment to acknowledge the tremendous work of Sarastro's painting here, whose scheme and ideas heavily influenced this paint job. If you don't already, then you absolutely should be checking out his work over on his channel that I'll link above and in the description below. Just stick with me for a bit too. Now let's crack on with some base coats. Kicking things off with the blue suit, I'll be using Scale Cutter's navy blue, desaturated with a little black as you can see, thinning it a touch to get a nice smooth coverage. Apologies if it's a tad dark, I had the light in the wrong place but soon tweaked my error. As always, we'll be applying a couple of thin coats here. Now that hopefully you can see better, let's cue the music. Sorry, I just couldn't resist that. Normal service will now resume. I'm now going to base in the skin and the hair using Cadian Flesh Tone and Dubai Brown, again mixed with a little black. Skin first, and as you can see I like to keep the paint very thin on these areas to avoid any strange texture building, and I'll be applying two thin coats as always. I'll then coat the hair in, using our dark brown mix on the darker shadowed areas, then swiftly coming back with some pure Dubai brown for the top, and wet blending the two together where they meet. Then we'll move on to the X emblems where I'll coat the background in Antares Red, using Anthracite Grey for the metals around as well as the piece of Sentinel at his feet. Both of these will be mixed with some black again. I'll also use the red on the visor as well. Now darkening the grey before coating in the flat piece of metal on the base. I came back later and redid the rock. followed by the buckles and emblems on the belt. Where next after the buckles and the straps, where it will be a mix of Sahara yellow and a little violet to help warm the tone, once again desaturated with a little black. All of these remaining areas will be coated in a couple of times with this thinned mix. I'll begin tidying up any mistakes I've made as I go on from now. Lastly for the base colours is the piece of rounded metal at his feet which I've decided is from a sentinel, so I'll be basing this in with roughly two parts fuchsia to one part African shadow. And now is as good a time as any to get the first coats on the base in the same style as I did for Ant-Man, and I'll put a link above for you to take you to that video which contains my tutorial on painting an urban base. With those base coats now done, it's time for some highlights. I'll begin highlighting the suit, so returning to our base mix, I'm going to be adding increasing amounts of Mediterranean blue in a couple of stages. I'll build these layers up, covering most of the figure to begin with, and leaving only the darkest shadows untouched, reducing each subsequent layer's area to help create a nice transition. This is where the Xenophil Prime comes into play, giving us a great map to follow for the placement of our light and shade. You'll notice that I'll make an effort to follow the contours of the body, drawing the brush up towards the light source as much as possible, and thus depositing the most pigment at the brightest point. This is now the pure Mediterranean blue. This is going to be our mid-tone for sight here, so a general broad highlight is what we're looking to achieve. It's always worth bearing in mind how far you want to push your highlights when mapping them out like this, so that you leave enough space for yourself to bring in your brightest areas. And don't worry if it seems a little bit too bright as you paint it on, the colour does tone down as it dries.
I'm now going to start mapping out the object source lighting effect by mixing fuchsia with some white, which will then begin adding into our midtone as we did previously. Now I know it's subtle at first, but trust me, it is there. This mix wants to be exclusively used only on the areas where the light from the blast would cast across the blue suit. As you move up through the layers, it will become progressively lighter and pinker, which can seem a little odd at first, but we need to desaturate this blue in order for our OSL glaze to properly show through later. If we didn't do this, then our lighting would end up a rich purple, nothing like the optic blast it's going to be reflecting. Keep increasing the proportion of our fuchsia mix each time and building up the layers of this as you would any normal highlight. Focusing the brush towards the areas the light would reflect on and reserving the brightest, most desaturated pinky blue for those parts closest to where the blast is. These are the areas that will be the most intense and thus require the most saturation from our glaze. This is going to be as bright as I get with this. As I said earlier, I'm focusing on the brightest points closest to the blast. For the rest of the suit, I'll be adding sky blue into the Mediterranean blue, then a touch of the Caribbean blue for our brightest highlights. This will be following the same method we've covered previously, building up layers towards our imagined light source, and in this case, the sun. I might stipple some of the paints on to help create a sense of texture. This is the pure sky blue. And here I'm adding some of the Caribbean blue in for my brightest highlight. Back to our base yellow mix now where we'll be adding increasing amounts of soul yellow followed by Teneri yellow for the brightest highlights. We'll also be building the OSL effect, although this time we'll work it up from our brightest highlight, the Tanir Yellow. This is a straightforward layering approach as before, though it's worth incorporating some edge highlighting in to really make those straps and pouches stand out. If you're not sure what I mean, simply run the flat of your brush along the sharp edges present, avoiding having too much paint in the bristles, and don't have it too thin either. We'll build this up to the soul yellow in a couple of stages again.
and we've now reached our pure mid-tone of Soul Yellow. You'll notice that I'm being quite broad with my highlights again around the area closest to the optic blast. It's all to help the glaze accurately represent the glow effect I'm trying to achieve. Now we'll jump straight to pure Tinea Yellow that you can see me just thinning a touch here. I'll use this as a final edge highlight on the majority of the figure, picking out the bright points where the light would catch, such as the knuckles, tips of the pouches and the buttons, that kind of thing. Then to build the lighting effect, I once more be adding in my fuchsia and white mix to the Tinea yellow, focusing the building of this just as we did previously, having the brightest, most desaturated points closest to the light source for maximum saturation later on. It can pay to look at your figure from the angle of the light source to help you better judge which points will be hit by the spread of the effect. Here I'm adding a little white to the mix for my final highlight. With that now done, we can move on to the face and the hair. For the face, I'm just going to add the white fuchsia mix into our base colour and pick out the bridge of the nose, cheekbones, chin and brows. Whereas for the hair, I'll repeat this process with the strands at the front facing the light source, the rest will have a touch of tenir yellow added to the Dubai brown and I'll use this to pick out the texture. Finally, we'll highlight up the buckles and sentinel pieces by adding white sands into our base mixes. So I'll kick off with pure anthracite grey, adding a small layer to the edge of the emblems and mapping out some highlights on the metal. Before then adding the white sands and building the highlight. The emblems and buckles just need some bright points and edge highlights added. The metal at his feet however will require a little mapping of tone and reflection. I find to maximise the contrast it's best to have opposites next to each other, in this case a dark panel bordering a bright highlight and vice versa. Finally, using pure white sands for our brightest glinting highlight. I'll now repeat the same process with the sentinel purple piece at his feet. Upping the value as before with the white sands and picking out the raised edges, always reducing the amount covered and building towards the brightest reflective point. Again picking out the brightest points with the pure white sands.
I just want to push the contrast a bit more, so I'm adding a little black to the base mix and glazing it into the recesses. It's now time to start glazing the OSL on, and I'll be using Vallejo's fluorescent magenta, thinned down with some water. The trick here is to not have too much in your brush's bristles, we don't want to flood the figure. Load up your brush, then wipe most of the excess away on a paper towel before applying it. Try and draw the bristles towards the light source so that most of the glaze builds at the point where your brush leaves, and don't go over what you've already done until it's completely dry to avoid tearing the paint. We'll apply this over all the parts that we picked out during the highlighting stages. You'll notice the darker blue areas start turning a subtle shade of purple, which only adds to the sense of depth that we're going for. This will require multiple thin coats built up over a period of time, allowing each to dry fully in between. Luckily, we can work on the base as we wait, so I'll be doing that, following the method that I used in the Ant-Man video, which I've linked above, in case you haven't seen it. I'll periodically return to the glaze and build the saturation where it's closest to the optic blast. Once I'm happy with the saturation and it's dried, I'll give the visor a coat of ultramatte varnish so that the glue from the blast doesn't affect the paint. Again, working on the base whilst I allow that to dry. When that varnish has dried though, it's time to finally fix the optic blast. The blast itself is a resin medium plas plasma blast from Deadly Print Studios, which I've primed in a pure white. I applied a tiny amount of superglue to it as it's resin, and before sticking it to the visor. Hopefully your hands won't be shaking as much as mine did while doing it. I'll continue my work on the base whilst that dries. Then returning to our glaze, I'll build this up over the blast. Be very wary of letting any paint pool in the recesses, ideally we want the white to remain to help us sell that glowing energy effect. It's going to be hard to see initially on here as I build the layers over several stages. Always working on the base whilst we wait, in this case adding a poster that I found on the Marvel Crisis Protocol Facebook page. Now adding the final glaze. You can see the patience has really paid off with a lovely smooth blend up to the saturated beam point. Finishing the base off with a little urban scatter and painting the rim a matte black. And when that's all dried, I'll apply a coat of ultra matte varnish. This completes Cyclops, and I just want to say how much fun it was to bring one of my favourite X-Men to life at the tabletop. As always, there's a list of paints on your screens now, and they can also be found in the description below, along with an affiliate link to the brushes that I use. This won't cost you anything, but will give me a small kickback, for which I'll be eternally grateful. My sincerest thanks as always to you all for watching, and once again a huge thank you to Trastro's Painting for his support. Until next time folks, bye for now.